Hello, people. Welcome in. Let's see what's going on. Oh, Peter, it's already here. All right. Good day, Dave. All right. From Sydney, Australia. Nice to see you here, Peter. Appreciate it. And as I've been mentioning the last few weeks, folks, tonight's going to be my last uh, Wednesday night YouTube class sponsored by Guitar Tricks for a little while. Uh, we Guitar Tricks decided they want to put me to use in other ways on their site and still involved with teaching and whatnot with Guitar Tricks. We're just taking a break from the uh, YouTube classes. So tonight's the last one. We've got a little uh, bonus tapping lesson since we've been doing tapping the last few weeks. And I thought I'd also maybe throw the gates wide open to anyone. If you have any questions about anything else, guitar music related, you want me to maybe go over in this last hour, I'd be happy to do that, even if it's not related to our curriculum we're working on today. Okay, so feel free to chime in. Steve's here. All right, Richard. Hello, hello. Craig, cool, cool. All right, so... While I'm kind of sipping my coffee here and just chatting for a minute, go ahead and open up the text box under your YouTube video and print out the curriculum from the blue URL link. You'll see it all there. It's two pages. And if you've been with me the last few weeks on this tapping stuff, we got into tapping. Week one was with one finger. Week two, we used two fingers. And then last week, week three of three, we were typing, typing, tapping. <laughs> using all four fingers on the right hand as well as the left. Today, we're going back to that one finger. And what I'm going to show you is a little piece I wrote that's um, using some cool techniques uh, for, for connecting your chords evenly. And I'm going to do it uh, kind of reminds me of like my version of eruption, sort of the tapping part of eruption. Okay. So if you read the title of what, the sheet is, it's called Tapping Triads Classical Style, okay? So I have a classical chord progression that's actually real easy to play, and you can play it almost with all open chords. I'll go over those with you in a sec. Um, and using voice leading. Voice leading is a really good technique to use. Piano players use it all the time, and composers and music use it a lot. It's when you connect a, one chord to another, with the minimal amount of motion, all right? So in other words, if we're playing, for instance, let me get a different sound here for a minute. Boom, boom, okay. So if we're playing like a, a G triad, and this works really good too, folks, with the triads. So, and that's in fact what we're doing. We're tapping triads, and I'll go over all that with you in a little bit. Um, but what I'm getting at with the voice leading is this. If you're doing like a E minor triad, and then your next chord is C major, what note or notes are in common with the E minor in between the E minor and the C major chords? And whatever those notes are, don't change them. Leave them where they are. Just change the note or notes you need to to make it C major. So from what I see here on E minor, I'll try it on the top three strings. All I have to do is move my middle finger up to the fifth fret third string, and I got a C major chord. Now, what if my next chord progression or my next change from E minor to C went to G to D, okay? Think about what notes are in common between C and G. They both have a G note in common, okay? Like E minor, the notes are E, G, B. Well, the E and the G is part of a C chord also. All we have to do is change the B note up to a C. Then we got your C triad. Now a C triad is C E G, and a G chord, G triad is G B D. Okay. If you don't know all this stuff, all you got to do is hold your chords down, your cowboy chords, okay, and figure out what the notes are. Learning a little bit of theory, people, and learning even less than that, learning just your notes on the fretboard, that will not hurt you. All right. For some, you know, some people don't want to go that far in their guitar playing. But I'm always puzzled by that because it's only going to help you become a better player to know your notes on the fretboard. And that's not even talking about theory, really. I mean, it's like theory 101, very beginner level stuff. Just get to know your notes on the fretboard. OK. And then from that, when I was a kid, I knew that if I wanted to find out what some of the notes were in the chords I play, because when I wanted a solo, 
I got to use the scale that's appropriate that has notes of all those chords. Okay. So it made me, you know, I started figuring out what the notes were and I would figure out what the notes of the chords were based on just counting up from each string to what they were. I didn't know about roots, thirds and fifths and any of that stuff till I went to music school. Okay. But I did know I had to find the scale or at least when I'm soloing, play notes that are in the chord too. That's how it's going to sound good people. Okay. So just, it would behoove yourself to try to learn that extra stuff. Okay. You, uh, it can't hurt you. It will not hurt you at all. In fact, it'll help you. Okay. So back to the ranch here, we had E minor to C, C major to G. Well, the common uh, note between C major chord and G major is the G note. So I would just switch to a G triad in this position. See this also folks, if you're doing triads with what I'm talking about with voice leading, it helps you to get to know your triads and you come up with some really cool ways and easy ways of playing a chord progression. Okay. And then the last chord of our progression was a G to a D. Now a D major chord doesn't have any notes in common between D and G. So I would have to move my whole shape. No notes are this. Well, you know what? I lied to you. Between G and D, the, the D note is the same. The fifth of the G chord, G, B, D, that D note's the same. Okay. And then when I go from the D chord, this is what I was getting at, back to E minor, there's no common notes between a D major and an E minor because the D major has D, F sharp, A. Okay. So look how efficient this changes. how that sounds instead of moving one chord all the way up and down the fretboard like going uh what we said e minor c major d d that's easy to do in terms of you don't have to really change your finger shape too much except the first chord is minor the rest are major you can just move it up or down the fretboard but that's a lot of work too you got to move back and forth and musically speaking, folks, it's not the most brilliant way, musical way to play something. It's always nicer when you can get it and close, use the voice leading. Although there's a lot of great music and heavy metal, a lot of punk music where they'll just do the power chords and move the power chords around. OK, that's good music, good for that style of music. But if you want to write melodic, tasty stuff, try to find the chords in the same position. That really helps you a lot, folks. So instead of going. Okay, this makes you think a little bit, but you keep it all together. Also involved doing a little bit of your line. You're saying, why don't you just play your G here right on top of the C? You could, but you're still moving your hand around a lot on the fretboard. Okay, so having more ways that you can play a chord progression will only help fatten up what you're playing. If you like to write songs, it's nice to have a chord progression, but try to make it give it some variety. How many different ways can I play E minor, C, G, D? Well, I just showed you a couple with the bar chords and with the triads. What if we just played them with the open chords? E minor. If you do E minor with your first and second finger, you see how the middle finger is your connector to the C chord? And then the open G string is the connector from C to G and then your D. Okay, that's one way to do it with open chords. You can do the bar chord way. Or the triad way sounds nice too. And you maybe even pick it out. Or maybe go. Or 
or maybe give it like a ska feel while the other band members are going. Okay, how about do a higher inversion? you can play your chords the more colorful and creative you can get when you write songs okay if you're playing in a band with another guitar player all right instead of both of you playing the chords open position the group i'm with now uh when i see the one guitar player who also sings when i see him playing chords down here okay on his acoustic guitar i play the same chords but i use the different triad inversions up top to give it a different flavor, okay? And then sometimes I'll play sparsely while he's strumming. I might just go. Give you a little choice, a little variety there. Okay, now how the heck does all that tie in with what we're doing here today? Well, that's the voice leading that I was talking about, trying to connect your chords that way. Now, I noticed another comment just came in, a bang's here. Good to see you, late March of Ramadan. All right, cool, cool, good to see you, bang. Okay, so how does that tie in with what we're doing? Well, the curriculum today is tapping triads classical style. So I have a classical chord progression and we're using voice leading. I've explained what the voice leading is. Now let's go through the chords for a sec in the chart. So we're not gonna do the tapping yet. I'll play that for you in a sec. In fact, let me just play it for you real quick here. Let me go to a more of a appropriate tone here for that. Okay, so like I mentioned a few minutes ago, everyone, this is sort of my little, uh, my knockoff of, Eruption from Van Halen. Now, when Eddie's doing the tapping section of Eruption, he's using voice leading as well. And I'll explain that in the first, his tapping arpeggios, how he's playing this one. Okay, that's whatever that chord is. I'll go over that later. And then when he changes to the next chord, he just keeps the index and pinky on the left hand the same and moves the right hand up a fret because now it's a different chord. Then he keeps the right hand where it is, moves the left hand up two frets. So there's always one or two notes that don't need to change when he connects these first series of chords. See that right there, C sharp minor. A major. D7 to B major to E major. C major. Then it's like a C sus two or C add nine. Then D major, D add nine, E major. Then it's like an E seven with a chromatic descending to E major. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit if we have time. But back to what we're doing here, folks. This is what my example sounds like, so everyone can hear this. Okay, second string, we're just gonna tap out the arpeggios. The chord name is written above every bar, okay? Try it a little quicker. Okay, 
So that's what we're headed for, folks. Let me go back to a slightly cleaner tone. Okay. So let's go through the chords for a sec. And all the chords in this song, there's no high dollar expensive jazz chords. Everything uh, are just majors or minor chords. You can play most of them open, except for the B chord. And then there is the, what do we got? A B7, which is easy. Uh, yeah. And then the F sharp diminished, I'll have to show you. Most, most of you might not know F sharp diminished. Okay. So it's going from E minor to B major. And then B major is kind of the easiest, quickest way is with that A form bar chord on the second fret. We're going E minor, B major, E minor, B major. First four bars. Then it repeats. We're going to go E minor, B major, E minor, then B7. Okay. And then bar six, we do a slight change. We go E major and then A minor. Okay, these are all open chords everyone should know. If you're watching this class, you should probably know these chords. After the D is the G, then a C chord. Okay, now F sharp diminished. Several ways you can finger it. The easiest, quickest way is this. It looks like a D chord, okay? But instead of being on the second and third fret, it's on the first and second. And you move all three fingers up a string. So it's sort of like a D chord shape on the wrong strings and the wrong fret. And then before we're done, folks, we're going to put the pinky on the first string, second fret. Now, just play the top five strings. Strings four, three, two, one. Okay. That's the F sharp diminished. Okay. And then after that chord, we go to B. Okay, F sharp diminishes the top of page two to B major. And then we go E minor to B major twice in a row. And then we're going to do E minor, B major again twice, a little quicker. And then we do E minor to B major even quicker. So what's happening at the very end of that, starting with bar 13 on page two, people, this one right here. We're doing sort of like a grand finale where we're winding up the excitement. We're doing E minor for four beats, B major for four beats. Okay. We do that twice. That's the second line. Okay. And then the third line, we'll do E minor for two beats, B major for two beats. We do that twice. Then the next bar, we're going to do E minor for one beat, B for one beat, E minor for one beat, B major for one beat, and repeat that twice. Okay, then we're just going to camp out on E minor all the way to the end for that tapping part there. So this, uh, these two lines right here, second and third line on page two, or in other words, bar 13, 14, and 15 would go like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, again. One, two, three, four. One, two, then twice each. One, two, three, four, again. And then one bar or one beat each. Four, one, two, three, four. Okay, it kind of builds excitement to hear it speed up like that. Okay, that's this part here when I'm doing. Actually, I'm doing this E minor, B major, E minor, B major, E minor, B. Okay, so those chords, folks, anyone, you know, if you've been playing a little while, you should know those chords. E minor, B major, E minor, B major. E minor, B major again, E minor, B7. E major, A minor, D major, G major, C major, F sharp diminished, B major, E minor, B major. Now, if we give numbers to each one of those chords, numerically speaking, in that key, there's a pattern here. A lot of classical music does a one to a five chord relationship, okay? 
So in other words, whatever key you're in, the one chord would be the, the key we're in. The five chord is the chord based off the fifth note in the key we're in. So in, the, in our tune right here, what's the first chord? E minor. What's five letters up from E minor? You use your fingers. E is the one, two, three, four, five. So whatever's on the pinky. So E, then F is two, G is three, A is four, B is five. See, between G and A, we go back to the A after G. And we don't have to use sharps and flats when we're doing this in this key because there's only one sharp. It's the Fs are sharp. So the only time you have to remember the Fs are sharp is if you hit a chord where it has the F sharp in it. Like the F sharp diminished, um, the B major also has an F sharp in it. Um, so does the D major. But just getting the root of the chord, that's the only F sharp uh, diminished chord is the only one we'll have to remember it'll be sharp. So all the other chords here, we can just count in our fingers. So a one to a five is a very common relationship. And that's what we're doing here, B minor to B the five. Because when you hear a five chord, you always want to have it resolve back to the one. So when we're tapping out that lick, then I go, that's E minor, and then B major. Okay, E major, uh, E minor, B major, back and forth. Then look what's happening here. This is another common chord progression. Is We'll start with, uh, where are we at right here? Uh, in bar six, the E, okay? Even though we're in E minor, just temporarily we're going to play E major here, but you can still use your fingers to count up. There's a certain logic to these chords, all right? There's definitely a pattern that's going on with the chords, a little mathematical pattern. And when we see patterns in music, people, it makes it music easier to understand when we start seeing the logic and how things are cyclic. They, you know, like the circle of fifths, all right? For instance, there's a lot of patterns that go on in music. And when we start to see what those patterns are, it's the light bulb goes off, all right? So how far is it from E major to A minor? Count your fingers. E is note number one, then F, G, A, uh, I'm sorry, E, F, G, A. It's the fourth one up. So we're going from E to A is a fourth higher, okay? Now from A minor to the next chord is D major. How many is that jump? A is one, then B, C, D is the fourth one. We've moved another fourth up, okay? Now from D to G, how far is that? D to G. Okay, D is one. Then after D is E, F, G is four. The pattern. Everything seems to be going in four so far. Let's make sure we're on the right track. Then G to C, okay? G, then back to A, B, C is the fourth again. So far, so good. All right, start with C, count up four letters, C, D, E, F, F is the fourth. But remember, in this key we're in, look at the top of this piece of music, it's got one sharp, and that one sharp is on all the Fs. So all the Fs in our song are sharp. And then when we get to this bar right here, the F sharp top of page two, you gotta just remember that when we're using our fingers to count the positions of the chords, Okay, just remember that the Fs are sharp. So we started with C, then D, E, F is sharp, okay? Now from the F sharp to the B, okay, just use F, all right, the letter F, G, A, B is a fourth up from the F sharp, okay? Now the B, count how far that is to the next chord is E minor, B, C, D, E. You're back at the E again. See, we've gone through all seven chords in the key of E minor, except for the very first one was E major, okay? But we went through all seven chords going a fourth degree up, a cycle of ascending fourths, okay? That's very common in classical music. They do that. A lot of Bach music does that, for instance. Um, and it's a pattern. It's, see how it's a pattern? Like I said, it's, it's all moving up in fourths. 
You could try something where you maybe move up in fifths, like go from whatever chord you're on, go up to the fifth of that. And then from that, go to the fifth of that. And from that, go to the fifth of that. You could try other patterns, maybe go in thirds, like whatever chord you're on, go up a third. And then from that, go up a third. See what that sounds like. Okay, you might come up with some really cool, interesting ideas for songwriting. Okay, also, you could try it going backwards, like start and instead of counting from like C going up to D, E and playing E as the third up, how about count backwards and go from C back three? So C, B, A. There you go. And you want the chords typically to be in the same key you're in. So you need to know a little bit about that too. Um, got a lot of theory lessons on Guitar Tricks, folks. So if you're a Guitar Tricks member, if you type in music theory in the search bar, stuff will come up. If you write me an email through the forum in Guitar Tricks or just find me on the internet, and if you're a Guitar Tricks member, I'll do a quick search and find some good theory lessons for you to um, to check out. Okay. So you can always get in touch with me, even though tonight's going to be our last class for a while. All right. You can still reach me at any point. I'm all over the internet. I've got my website, davesalentown.com. Uh, if you're not a Guitar Tricks member, if you are a Guitar Tricks member, you can still find me there, but you can also find me on the Guitar Tricks forum. You can email me or comment there and I'll read that. Uh, so Richard's got a good question here. He says, can you play a triad as a seventh? Would it be one, three, seven or one, five, seven? Well, usually what seventh chords, Richard, are not triads. They're actually four note chords. OK, so you, you, yes, you can leave out some of the notes to play three. Um, but typically this, if you're playing a C major chord, which is C, E, G. Okay. And you want to make it a seventh, the seventh note from C. That's what the numbers are. All right. C, D, E, F, G, A, B would be B. So somehow I got to turn that C, add a B note in there somewhere. If I take my first finger off, second string open is a B. That's a really easy C major seven. Okay. Has a nice jazzy sound. Now, when you think about it, Richard, I might blow your mind with this, but seventh chords are two triads overlapping, okay? So like C major seven, for instance, Richard, is the root third and fifth are the C, E, G. And then the three, five, seven of C major seven is an E note, a G note, and a B. That's also, even though it's the third, fifth, and seventh of C major seven, just those notes in themselves, the E, G, B, that's an E minor triad. So if you do, whenever you're doing seventh chords, the third, fifth, and seventh of whatever that seventh chord is you're playing, that's a triad, all right? Now, it might not necessarily be the same quality. Notice how the low part of the C major seven is a C major triad. And then the upper part of it, the three, five, seven, is an E minor triad, okay? So usually that's the case. If we did an A minor chord, for instance, and made it A minor seven, the seventh of A minor would be the G note, okay? So I could add that by adding my pinky on the first string, third fret. Okay, that'd be one way to do it. Now, if I look at the root third and fifth of A minor, it's A, C, and E. That is definitely a minor chord. But if I go from the third to the fifth to the seventh of A minor seven, the third is C, the fifth is E, and the seventh is B, okay? That is a C major triad. So the lower triad, one, three, five of A minor is A minor triad. The upper three, five, seven of A minor seven is a C major triad. So it's never minor and minor. It's always minor and then the upper triad is major or the opposite. Okay. And there's other, two, we can go deeper in that, Rich, but I don't want to go too deep into that right now. But I think you got the idea. So if you're going to leave out though, that's a good point you got there, Richard. If you're going to leave out a note of a seventh chord, 
The first one to go is usually the fifth because the fifth degree doesn't tell us whether the chord's major or minor, okay? The note that tells us whether it's major or minor is the third. So you definitely want the third, like a root and a third, okay? The fifth though, whether you're playing C major, C major seven, C dominant seven, C minor seven, the fifth never changes, okay? So you're gonna get rid of that one and it doesn't really affect the, you know, you're not gonna lose any quality of the chord. And then the seventh is also real important because sometimes it's major seven for C major seven, or sometimes it's C seven for the C dominant seven where the seventh degree is flatted. Okay, or if you're playing a C minor seven, the third's flatted and the seventh is flatted. Okay, so major seven is a C with a major seven and a major third. Then C seven has a C major with a flat seven. And then C minor seven is C with a flat third and flat seven. Okay. So there's those are really unique little shell ways of playing the chords. I think we call them shell voicings. When you don't play all the notes of the chord, you just play like what you're mentioning, Richard, the root third and seventh, for instance. Especially when chords get really complex and you got like a like an A13, all right? 13th chords and ninth chord, well, ninth chords, for instance, are root third, fifth, seventh, and ninth. That's five notes. Okay. We only have six strings. So we don't have many choices as we start to get more sophisticated with these high dollar chords. If you played an uh, A minor 11, that would be A, I mean, the root third, fifth, seventh, ninth, and 11. That's six notes right there. All right. Most of the time, though, it, it just starts to sound kind of cluttered. So we would definitely start leaving notes out. Same with 13th chords. That would imply a 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. Well, usually 13th chords, they automatically leave out the fifth, all right? And then you probably don't need, since it says 13, you want that, and you also want the third and the seventh. So usually when the chords start going extended far, Richard, they leave out, they always want to have the root third and seventh. And then if it's a nine, have the nine in there. If it's an 11, don't have the nine, just add the 11. And if it's a 13, don't add the nine or 11, just have the one, three, seven, and the 13. Okay, that way the chord doesn't sound really too cluttered. Because if you get too many notes going, see like that's an A minor nine sound. With a root, third, fifth, flat seven, Third's latitude. Okay, it sounds kind of kind of cluttered. Here's a better way to voice that. It sounds a lot more open when you have it voiced a little differently. Okay, a lot of cool ways. And Richard, this is something. Yeah, maybe I talked too much on that, Richard. But glad you got it. Cool, cool. But um, this is stuff I gladly go over with students in one-on-one -on -one lessons because. A lot of students don't want to do this stuff. They just want to work on uh, a little more simplified theory um, and songs. And that's fine, too. You know, as long as we're having fun playing guitar, that's the important thing. If you want to understand more what you're doing, write songs, it would behoove you to learn a little bit of theory and just kind of take baby steps with it. Don't feel, please don't feel intimidated by it either, because we're never going to learn all the theory. Folks, I go goodness knows I don't know everything at all. I know a sliver of the big the big world of music theory. Okay, there's plenty of jazz players and classical composers that dance circles around what I know, um, and it can probably explain stuff to me a lot better and deeper too. But I'm just sharing with you what I know, which I know for most of my students it's uh, more than they care to know. They just want to get good on guitar. So that's what I try to convey in my lessons one-on-one -on -one, is just have fun with it. Try your best to get good, but and I try to help them understand what they're doing as well, a little bit on the fretboard. Um, but we you know, want to have fun playing the guitar. We need to spend our time playing and applying whatever theory you know to the guitar. 
So, all right, Jim's got a question here. Can I play pretty well, or I can play pretty well and know a good amount of theory, but having trouble trying to put it all together. Any suggestions? Yeah, Jim, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, when you work on songs, try to analyze the song. And just for me, learning songs over the years for students, transcribing them and having to explain to them things, what key it's in, what the chord change is, uh, not just what the chords are, but is it like a one, six, two, five chord progression or a one, four, five chord progression or a two, five, one chord progression, or in our classical piece here, we're going one, five, one, five, and then we're going in a cycle of fourths from E we're going like one to four and then a fourth up from that. All right. So you can analyze it that way, Jim. Another thing is maybe try to apply some of the theory, you know, like write a little exercise or part of a song using triads, for instance, or if you're learning a new scale, Jim, maybe some new scale you're not familiar with, or one of the modes, you know, if you're into working on the modes, try to write a rhythm guitar part that fits that mode. And then try to find a backing track on YouTube or us and guitar tricks. We've got a bunch in the jam station or just create your own chord uh, backing track, loop it or record it on your, you know, if you have software to record and jam over it um, and try to find the right mode and use the right notes that help you to play it. Like if we know the Phrygian mode, for instance, Jim, okay. A lot of, my students might know the mode, but they don't realize that certain notes sound cooler to do than others. And then also, usually when you play Phrygian, it sounds good, but a lot of times guitar players will make the minor third of Phrygian a major third, and then you get... sound. So if I try to follow the chords with it and then play those magic notes that sound good, it sounds really nice rather than just kind of going. Like try to write some phrases with it. Um, Jim, if you did a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me, I'd be glad to give you some other ideas. I got a ton of curriculum on my Google drive. I share with students, um, but that's it. Just try to, Try to use it. Try to whenever you learn a song, try to analyze the song and all the details. Find out what's going on in that guitar player who played its mind when they're playing their solos. Same thing. Figure out what not just learn the solo, but figure out what kind of scale is he doing? Like sometimes some songs don't play all in one key or they might be like Hotel California is in B minor, but the guitar players aren't just playing B natural minor. Sometimes they're playing B uh, Dorian. Sometimes they're playing B harmonic minor. And then sometimes they're playing B natural minor. So when we learn songs like that, try to analyze it and see where they're playing one scale or the other. Even though they're, the tonal center is B minor, but they might make subtle differences as flavors to um, follow the chord change a little better. So there you go, Jim. Hopefully that helped you a little bit. Um, so let's get into our tapping here, folks. Oh, appreciate it, Jim. Says uh, thanks for the great suggestions and all the amazing lessons. Oh, you're very welcome, Jim. Appreciate it. Your your kind words. Wednesday won't be the same without you. Well, folks, on Guitar Tricks YouTube channel, all these videos that I've done over the last couple years, and same with Michael Lexi, another one of the guitar instructors on Guitar Tricks. All his should still be up on the YouTube, Guitar Tricks YouTube channel. So you can watch the reruns if you missed anything. Yeah, so I've been doing this for about four years, maybe. I think when COVID started, Guitar Tricks um, had me do some. I was doing them on Facebook for a while. And I believe Mike Alexi was doing them on YouTube. Um, and then they bounced me from Facebook to YouTube. 
uh, ever since then. So I've been doing these for about four years. So it's bittersweet, folks. I, I will miss chatting and jamming. You know, I love to play guitar and help others with it. Um, but I'll be doing other things with guitar tricks, and who knows? Maybe they might ask me to do these again. So it could be in the future. But, Jim, if you're more than welcome to book a lesson with me and we can talk one-on-one -on -one and figure out a game plan, listen to what you play, and kind of work off of that and, and give you some ideas to do and make you think. I try to make all my students think, even the you know when they're just a beginner. I don't just show them what to practice and that's it, but I try to ask them questions I don't try. I ask them questions that make, pardon me, that make them think. Okay. So let's go through our uh, details here. If you want to know more about the voice leading people, write down these notes. I'm going to play uh, the licks for you. And as I play them, I'm going to tell you what the three notes are of the chord. So maybe what you can do if you printed it out, just write E minor and then write the three notes that are in E minor, which are E, G, and B. Okay. Then for B, major write down the three notes of them right here and then when you go back and look through the tab the, the tablature part that i'm going to play okay all those notes in the tab are those three notes just mixed up in a different order okay so no matter how you play the three notes of e minor no matter how you mix them up it's still going to sound like e minor okay same with b b major is a b d sharp and f sharp okay write that down so when you're doing the tapping lick you can, you know, you want to help yourself be better instead of just playing something. You know, there's a lot of guitar players I see in the music stores and online. They play real good. But like, you know, obviously I can't ask someone online something. But when uh, I see them in a music store, I might just talk to them and ask them, you know, hey, show me what you play again. And I'll ask them a question and they'll play real good, but they have no idea what notes they're playing or even sometimes what scale they're playing. I'm shocked. So they obviously just learned something and copied it and didn't bother trying to go a little further. Um, and again, when I have students with me, just starting to take lessons as they're playing me for the first time, some stuff, I might ask them, Hey, what did you just play there? And what was that? And some of them know what the notes were and what scale they were, but some of them don't. So that's kind of what we're here for folks is to get better. Um, and understanding notes and your little bit of theory and your notes on the fretboard will not hurt you. Okay, so let's get moving here so we can get on with this. Let me just add a little bit of grit to the guitar sound here. Okay, so the first one's E minor. And what I do is I took the Eddie Van Halen eruption lick. Okay, but instead of doing it over and over again... Between those two chords... I'm going to change it up. So the first three notes are the eruption lick. Okay. Then the next part is tap, pull off, pull off. And then I pull off to the open string. Since I'm tapping the 12th fret, that's the same note as the open string. So the open string is another note I could throw in. Okay. So I go three notes are like eruption, tap, pull off, hammer on. And then I go tap the 12 again, pull off to the 8, pull off to the 5, pull off to the 0, and then hammer it back to 5 and 8. Okay? And then the last part is tap, pull off, pull off. So it's a 12-note sequence that doesn't repeat until the end. Okay? And then for the B major chord, all we got to do is move the left hand back a fret. You're going to use the same sequence... Same tapping sequence, but we're at frets uh, four and seven on the left hand. Right hand stays at the 12th fret. And then bar three is the E minor again. Just do that again. And then the bar four plays the B and then has a little pause. Okay, so we got... And then it's got a repeat sign right there after bar four. Okay, so we're going to go back, play bar one, two, and three again. But then we're not going to play bar four. See the first ending bracket? Not going to do that on the second time. We're going to do the second ending down here in bar five, which is the B7. So we're going to do the E minor again. Back a fret for B. Up 
the fret for E minor. And then B7, I'm going to just move my left hand up to the 7th and 10th frets. Now, the B7 chord, folks, has a B, a D sharp, F sharp, and an A in it. So I'm going to leave out the, uh, the D sharp, and I'm just going to play the root 5th and 7th. Okay? So all together, we got this. major okay or actually let me go back between the e and the b major the common denominator is the 12th fret the b note the third string and then the open b note the open second string uh 12th fret on the second string or both b's so the b note was the common thread that didn't change the whole time we went e minor to b okay now we go up to the bar what is that six Bar six with E major, the frets are five, nine, and 12. And the lick now changes. I'm gonna play something a little simpler. It's a six note pattern. The first three notes are like Eddie does an eruption. And then the next three notes are tap, pull off, pull off. So listen to the sound of this. Okay, we're gonna do that twice for the E chord. Okay, your E major chord has E, G sharp, and B. The A minor chord, the next one, has A, C, E. What are the common threads? The common note there is your, um, what is it, folks? It's the E. So the E note won't change. That's my index finger at the fifth fret. Okay, that's going to stay the same. For A minor, I'm going to move the tap finger up to the 13th fret, pinky up to the 10th fret. It's a little bit of a stretch. 5 to 10 there, but this is the biggest stretch in the tomb. So if you get past this, the rest is uh, downhill. It's easier. So we go from E major, A minor. Okay, now the next chord after A minor is D major. That has the notes of D, F sharp, and A. The common thread there is the A note. So in the A that we're doing here, where's the A note? It's the pinky on the 10th fret. So that note won't change, okay? I'm going to move the left hand from E up to the 7th fret, the F sharp, and I'm going to move my tap finger up to the 15th fret for the D note. You hear how these sound like the chord? The first one's E major. A minor. D major. Okay. Now the D major to G major, the notes of the G major are G, B, and D. The common thread here is the D note. So the D is our tap finger. I'm not going to move that. I'm going to move the left hand, though, up to frets 8 and 12 for the G. Just tap, tap in the notes G, B, D. Okay? And you notice I'm using the same sequence we started with with the E major. We're doing tap, pull off, hammer on. And tap, pull off, pull off. We do that twice for every chord. A minor. D major. G major. C major is C, E, and G. The common thread there from G to C is your G note. That's the index finger on the left hand. So that won't change. I'm going to move my tap finger up to the six, 17th fret. Pinky up to the 13th fret. Okay, now we got F sharp diminished, which is F sharp, A, B sharp, which is really C, but we're going to call it B sharp. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm, I lied to you folks. I lied. F sharp diminished is F sharp, A, C. Forget what I said about the B sharp. That's a different, different thing. All right, so we got F sharp. Uh, a and C sharp are our primaries. So from the C, the C note is the common thread. So I'm not going to move the like, pinky. That's on the C. All right, 13th fret. I'm going to move my left hand index up to the A at the 10th fret. 
and I'm going to move my tap finger up to the 19th fret. That's your F sharp. So there's your F sharp, A, and C. C. So from the C, we went. So this whole part here, guys, from bar six until the end, there's always one note in a given chord that stays the same when we go to the next chord. Okay. And it's not the same note for every chord, but it's, there's always one. So this is kind of like a treasure map. Try to find the note. That's the common thread between every chord change you're doing and try to see it on your fretboard. All right. I was showing everyone at the beginning of the session, the, the triads on three strings using voice leading. Now we're doing it using the finger tapping. Okay, F sharp diminished, we got that, so F sharp A, C. And then the B, we already talked about that. That's B, D sharp, F sharp. The common thread is your F sharp. So that's my tap finger. I'm not going to move that, but I'm going to move the left hand up to frets 12 and 16. Okay, and do the B there. And then we're to E minor is our next chord. Okay, the notes of E minor are E, G, and B. We talked about that at the beginning of the exercise. Okay, the common thread is B. So I'm going to leave the B alone. That's your index finger on the left hand. I'm going to move the pinky up to the 17th fret, tap finger, which is E, and then the tap finger moves up to the 20th fret, which is the G. And then to the B, I just move my tap finger and pinky back a fret. And then repeat, up a fret, back a fret. See how my first finger never moves. It stays put. Okay, and then we're on to the bar 15. We're going to do the same thing one time each. Okay, and then now we're going to do it a little differently in bar 16. We're going to tap. We've been doing triplets so far, which have a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three feel. Now bar 16 uh, is 16th notes. So instead of one, two, three, da, 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 it's going to go one E and a two E and a da, 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 da. Okay, and I changed the tapping lick. We still have the same notes for E minor and B, but now the lick has changed. Now, if you look at bar 16, we're going to tap 20, pull off to 12, then hammer on 17, pull off to 12. So we're going to do this one time, then move your pinky and your tap finger back a fret. Do the same thing for the B major. Tap the 19, pull off to 12. And we're on the 16, pull off to 12. And then back to E minor. Oh, did I mention too, people, that this is a great exercise for building up your pinky strength, okay? Doing this uh, type of tapping stuff really gets that pinky stronger. So uh, what are we on? Bar 16 sounds like this, folks. One more time. Okay, and then the last bar, uh, last two bars, bar 17, I'm going to tap. This is kind of interesting. I'm gonna. It's like a trill, but I'm going to tap, pull off with the tap finger, 17 to 12, and then I'm going to hammer on 17 with the pinky and pull off to 12. Okay. So I'm actually tapping the same note that I'm going to hammer on with the pinky. It's a pretty quick sound, huh, for a trill? Kind of a neat sound, huh? It takes a little practice to get the hang of it. OK, 
Okay, so just camp out on that bar 17. Now what I would suggest, if you like the sound of that, when you tap, pull off upwards for sure, because then when you hammer on with the pinky, you're gonna pull off downwards. So you, if you tap and push downwards, you're pushing into the territory that the pinky's at, which is gonna, you might hit it and it sounds kind of, it'll sound like a mistake. Okay, so try to tap, pull off upwards. Hammer on, pull off downwards. Okay, and then the last note, tap 17 and vibrato it. That's another good exercise too if you're into the tapping. Work on your vibrato with your tap finger. And then slide out. Second Chance Band, hello, stopping by to say hey, thanks. Yep, very welcome there. I appreciate your stopping in, Marianne. Yep, cool. Yep, it has been a musical journey. I've been doing this, like I mentioned a little bit ago, Marianne. Uh, I've been doing this for about four years. Guitar Tricks had me on Facebook doing it for a while, and then we bounced to YouTube. But, um, yeah, everyone, yep, I'm going to wrap it up in a sec. But... Have fun with this. I'm still around, still teaching a lot. I got a ton of students and love helping people. It's what I do. Help people play guitar and play music. Um, Wit's here. All right. Hello, hello, Wit. Richard, thanks for your thanks, Dave, for your lessons. Have given me a greater love of playing the guitar. Good, Richard. Glad to hear, man. Yep, same. You're welcome, Pete. Thank you for uh, stopping by, Craig. Yep. Yep. Appreciate it, Craig. And you're still one of my one-on-one -on -one lessons. So I'll see you at your next one. I think that's, uh, I think that's tomorrow, right? Yeah. looks like I got you on my schedule. I see. Cool, Craig. All right. And even if this stuff isn't necessarily your cup of tea, it's still nice to see some different styles people and expose you to it. Cause it's, it's healthy to learn different styles. You know, I love the blues, but I also love a lot of other things too. A lot of uh, classical music. I love rock and roll. I love metal. It's fun to learn different styles and then try to put the stuff together. All right. It takes a while. I've been playing over 40 years, probably over uh, over 50 years almost, but long time. Just stick with it, people. Have fun. That's the important thing. All right. Ron. All right. Good, good. You're welcome. Wit, how are you? I'm doing fine, Wit. We're, this is our last Wednesday night class. Guitar Tricks uh, is going to have me doing some other stuff for the site. But uh, what do you say here, Wit? That guitar in the back, I had the same one. Um, which one? You talking the, the classical nylon or the Martin one or that Tuttle guitar that's like a Strat? All right. Yeah, King 50. All right, no problem. Yep. You're very welcome, King50. That's uh, one of my other students, Bill. Cool, cool, cool. Um, who knows? Guitar Tricks might have us do this again. I know Michael X, she was doing it for a while, too. And um, he, we develop a good following, and the, the students uh, come close to our hearts. All right? So it's bittersweet, um, but I'll still be teaching. Wit says the Tuttle, right on. Yeah, Mike Tuttle. He, he used to live... Uh, when I was living in California, he lived, we both lived in the same town. He's a great guy. Um, and he's still making guitars. They're worth it. He makes some beautiful guitars. So I'm sure you're very happy with yours, Wit. Cool, cool. And then Steve in New Hampshire, thanks for the lessons. You're welcome, Steve. All right. Here on Guitar Tricks too. Yep. Yep, definitely. All right. One by the closet. Yeah, I got you, Wit. Exactly. Yep, yep. You know, I don't think you're disappointed. If you have one, Tuttle Guitar makes top, top line stuff. All right, everyone. It's been fun. I'll see everyone around. Be good. And I'll catch everyone in the future somewhere. I'll still be poking around. Check out my YouTube channel as well, folks, if you're uh, into that. I don't give lessons on the YouTube channel, but I have a lot of videos. And as I do more performances with the band or my, myself, or with other collaborations with other guitarists, I'll definitely post some stuff. I've gotten um, some some guitar players from Europe are reaching out to me about doing some recording 
uh, on some of their songs. So I'm going to be doing some of that in the future too. So if we get anything that sounds worthy, I'll post it up. If we get videos of it, if not, I'll probably just post the audio on my Facebook page or something, but uh, okay, cool, cool. So everyone have a good night. Peace. Keep them fingers flying people. And the bottom line, when you're playing guitar, it gets frustrating sometimes. Just don't give up. All right. Try to pick it up a little bit every day. It, as you get better, it gets more fun and gets easier, but to get there, you got to kind of stick with it. And trust me, it's not been always a fun road for me. I've had obstacles I had to get over in my playing um, and I'm still working on them. So just hang in there. Keep doing the same thing. Stick with it. Don't give up. All right, everyone. Be good. Peace. We'll see you around. And Rocky, we'll see you around too, man. I'll see you across the street over there. My neighbor likes watching this every Wednesday. So anyone be good. Peace. Keep them fingers flying, people. See you around. Okay. Bye.